To learn more about earning college credits with study hall courses, go to gostudyhall.com or click the link in the description. The life of a computer can be broken down into just two things, yes and no. Don't believe me? Just ask them. See? While our lives might be a bit more complex than yeses and noes, when it comes to computers, that's the best way to get stuff done. To make complex decisions with computers, we need to break them down into a series of yes or no questions, which is surprisingly powerful. With some careful programming thought, entire complex, multi-step problems can be broken down into yes or no questions, so our little computer friends can help us make powerful decisions. I'm Sabrina Cruz, and this is Study Hall, code and programming for beginners. Beginners. While a computer can't make a complex decision on its own, a computer program can. And we can translate those decisions into well-structured code by breaking down problems into the simplest choices possible. Most choices, even complex ones, can be expressed as a series of smaller decisions. Which is pretty important since the only type of choice that a computer can analyze is a yes or no decision. It all goes back to the binary nature of digital computing. The conditions we give a computer to make decisions have to end up as either true or false, or else a computer can't follow them. But still, with programming, we can start to ask bigger questions, like, is there dangerous weather we should warn people about? Let's translate that into computer logic. Like we saw in our episode on if-else statements, we can write a program that checks some sort of criteria, called a conditional statement, before it runs a certain part of code. If the conditional statement is true, then that part of the code runs. But if it's false, we skip that piece of code and continue our program. And if else statements are a core piece of how we can make our code nimble. This way, the code can do different things depending on whatever we input. Like, let's say we're adding a feature to a weather app that will send the user notifications based on the temperature outside. The temperature is our input, and when it changes, we might need a different notification to send to the user. For speed, we'll say that we've already taken in data from a thermometer and assigned it to a variable named temperature for us. All we have to do now is define some conditions to warn us about the weather. Let's start with something really simple just to make sure that the thermometer is working. In my objectively correct opinion, 65 degrees Fahrenheit is the perfect temperature. That's 18 degrees Celsius if you live almost anywhere else in the world, or 291 Kelvin if you're correct. Anyway, let's build a conditional statement to check if the temperature is exactly 65 outside. Here we use double equal signs to see if the temperature matches 65. If it does, the computer will tell us that the weather is perfect. If it doesn't, nothing gets printed. We're basically asking, is the temperature 65 degrees? Yes or no? So with that one yes or no question, we've already helped our program make a decision about when to announce the perfect temp. But asking if one thing is equal to another only gets you so far. There are so many more types of yes or no questions we could ask that can be even more meaningful. In programming, statements that only have yes or no answers are called Boolean expressions. So our question about the weather is a Boolean expression. When we're programming, instead of yes and no, we say true and false, which are called Boolean values. So it was true that the temperature was equal to 65 degrees. And anytime we hear the word Boolean, or bool, if you're in the know, we're dealing with true or false questions. And these questions come in a lot of shapes and sizes. For example, we can add some extreme weather warnings to our program too. First, we'll add a heat warning that reminds us to stay hydrated and cool in temperatures at or above 95 degrees. Then we'll also add a warning for the opposite extreme. If the weather hits 32 degrees or lower, our program will remind us to bundle up and beware of ice. These new conditions are pretty similar to our 65 degree check. All we did was change the mode of comparison. We switched from a double equals, which represents equality, to using greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. These kinds of symbols are called relational operators because they describe how two values relate to each other and return true or false. Other important comparison operators include greater than and less than. All of these operators compare the order of specific values. Just like when we check to see if something was exactly equal, these are still statements that result in a Boolean value. If it's true that the temperature is greater than or equal to 95, then we'll send a warning. If it's false, then we won't. And we can also use these relational operators to check if things aren't equal to each other. In Java, the not equal to operator is an exclamation point and an equal sign. But in other languages, you might see it represented by a tilde equals or a less than and greater than sign next to each other. Like, imagine 
imagine we have a very expensive cheese for our lasagna that needs to stay at exactly 40 degrees. We can use our temperature program to monitor our fridge instead of the outdoors and send out a warning if the temperature deviates from 40 degrees to make sure our lasagna is safe. This time we're using the inequality operator, so the warning is triggered when the temperature doesn't equal 40. All of these different relational operators give us more tools for asking even more complex questions beyond if two things are just equal to one another. And like we can see with our weather program, we can create multiple sets of options our program can follow depending on the input. The process of comparing numbers is incredibly useful, but sometimes one comparison isn't quite enough to translate the complex knowledge that we need into code. So we'll need another powerful tool in our tool belt, logical operators. They let us check multiple conditions at the same time. There are two main operators for combining conditions. The logical AND lets us combine two conditions to make sure both are true, and it's written with two ampersands. If only one of the conditions is true, the logical AND will say that the entire condition is false. Both of them have to be true. But then we have the logical OR, which is written with two pipes and only makes sure that at least one condition is true. So if only one or both of the conditions are true, then it will return that the entire condition is true. These let us create compound conditions, which chain together multiple comparisons at once, instead of the simple conditions we used before that only checked one at a time. And we can adjust our temperature program again to see these new operators in action. Let's say a medical office wants to use our thermometer program to safely store vaccines. These vaccines have to be stored at a temperature between negative 58 degrees and 5 degrees Fahrenheit, or else they might stop working. The conditional statement for this situation is similar to our last example, except that we'll use a compound condition instead. For our problem, we'll make sure that the temperature is greater than or equal to negative 58 degrees. Then we'll use the logical AND to connect that to another condition that says that it's also less than or equal to 5 degrees. If both parts of the condition evaluate to true, the vaccines are safe. Otherwise, we'll issue a warning in the else block. Again, under the hood, Java is checking each of these conditions as either true or false. Then the logical AND checks that both conditions are true. If one or both are false, we skip that block of code and move on. But what if we only needed one of these conditions to be true? That's where the logical OR comes in. When we set up our weather warnings earlier, we had two concerns, extreme heat and extreme cold but we could also check for extreme weather in general. This code will tell us the weather is extreme if it meets our criteria. If it's either super hot or super cold, we'll print out a warning, but we don't need both to be true like with the logical AND. But we do have to be careful with these compound expressions since there are a few common mistakes. Imagine we have three integer variables. If we're trying to compare them and say A is less than B, we'll get a result of true because, well, 2 is less than 3. That works great, but we couldn't try to compare all of them at the same time without using a logical operator. We can't chain multiple comparisons inside of one expression. That notation works in math, but not in Java code. To fix it, we can break up the two comparisons and use a logical AND. That doesn't mean we can say A is less than B and C, though. In order for this to work, we have to fully separate the two expressions. A is less than B and B is less than C. That gives us the power to make complex decisions with these comparisons. We can use these compound comparisons to branch out the path we take depending on the input. This allows us to do a lot of different things with just a little data. But complex expressions aren't the last tool in our tool belt. Earlier, we saw the not equal to operator that we used for comparisons. But we also have another logical operator called the logical not. If we put an entire comparison in parentheses with an exclamation point at the beginning, it will give us the opposite result of that comparison. It's kind of like the uno reverse of parentheses. Programming. Let's go back to our cheese example from earlier. We use the inequality operator to see if our fridge temperature moved away from 40 degrees. Another way to check this would be to see if our fridge temperature is equal to 40 degrees and then negate that result using the logical not. This way, when the fridge temperature doesn't equal 40, we'll still get the cheese warning. It's the same logic with a different implementation. 
And when we're working with logical operators like these, there's usually a bunch of different ways to express the same idea. There isn't really a right way to do it, so you can just do whichever way makes the most sense for you. After you get the hang of this, you can combine multiple logical conditions together. Take that warning from before, where we sent a message if the temperature was either extremely hot or extremely cold. If there is some issue with the thermometer that makes it read out an impossible temperature, we don't want to send out a warning that might frighten people. We can expand our expression to exclude temperatures above 160 degrees Fahrenheit and below negative 140 degrees, since those are beyond previously recorded records across the world. So we have our original compound condition that uses OR to check for extreme temperatures, but now we'll make another expression that checks if the temperature is in the range that we consider a malfunction using the same method. But we'll put this new condition in parentheses with the logical NOT in front of it, since we're making sure that the temperature isn't in the malfunction range. Then we can put our first compound conditions in parentheses as well and combine the two using AND. Now this reads, if the temperature is in a dangerous range and isn't in an impossible range, then print out a weather warning. So not only can these compound conditions allow us to make complex decisions, they can also help check for errors. Programs rely on data that we provide them, and we don't live in a perfect world. Things break, sometimes we input things wrong, but we have the power to check for those things and make sure that the program runs smoothly. Conditional statements allow a program to make decisions and execute different actions based on variable values, and are a great tool to improve our programming problem solving. As the programs we build become more and more complex, the decisions we need our programs to make will also grow in complexity, and conditional statements give us the power to make that happen. If you're enjoying Study Hall Code and Programming for Beginners and are interested in taking an online course and earning college credit, visit gostudyhall.com or click on the button to learn more. Thanks for watching. See you next time.